This video is one of a series designed to show science teachers and astronomy educators some of the ways that Worldwide Telescope can help students understand our universe. This particular screencast is an overview of the 3D solar system model, which is actually misnamed because it shows far more than just the solar system. But we'll get to that towards the end of this video. First, let's start in the solar system. Now note that you can change the size of the objects in the solar system for easier viewing. This is how the sun, planets, and moon should look when shown to actual scale. You can see the sun just barely and not much else. So Worldwide Telescope gives you the option to enlarge solar system bodies. But um, remember to remind your students that this is not the correct scale especially the sun's size relative to Mercury's orbit here in the middle. So this is how it really should look, and this is how things look when you enlarge the solar system bodies. You can travel to any body by clicking on these thumbnails. Let's start at home, Earth. This 3D model is running accurately in real time, so if we sit and watch the screen for 24 hours, the Earth will rotate around once on its axis. We also have the option to speed up time, so you go up to this View tab and click on this double arrow. And every time you click it, time speeds up by a factor of 10. So now time is running 10,000 times faster than real time. Um, now because of the accurate lighting that you get in Worldwide Telescope, even a very young child can begin to understand the, co the cause of night and day. So they can see that the people who live on this side of the Earth are facing the sun, and they're getting daylight, whereas people on the other side of the Earth are facing away from the sun, and they're in darkness and experiencing nighttime. This 3D model is also a powerful tool for teaching hard to visualize topics like seasons and moon phases. So first let's dial in a date of December 20th, and let's take a look at what the sun is doing. So you can see from this perspective that um, the sun is shining more directly on the southern hemisphere. And it's the northern hemisphere that's getting more indirect rays, and it'll be cooler here. If we ratchet time forward by six months, then the opposite is true. So now it's the northern hemisphere that's getting the more direct sunlight, and the southern hemisphere is getting indirect sunlight. Um, so a very common misconception is that seasons are caused by varying distance from the Earth to the sun, which is exacerbated by static two-dimensional images in textbooks that tend to show things from a perspective kind of like this at an angle, where it looks like the Earth is very close to the sun here and here, but very far away here and here. But if they're using Worldwide Telescope, they can manipulate this whole 3D model, and they can go to an overhead view of the orbit and see that the orbit is actually circular, which makes distance an unimportant factor for seasons. Uh, moon phases are another challenging topic for students to visualize. So let's take a look at the moon here. And let's go forward a couple of days and see how things look. So in Worldwide Telescope, students can look at the relative positions of the Earth, Sun, and Moon. There's the Sun. And you can see how the Sun is shining on the Moon and illuminating this half of the moon, whereas this half is in darkness. So now if we go to the Earth and see what the moon looks like from an Earth's perspective, you get this crescent view. So this is a waxing crescent moon to somebody in the northern hemisphere. You can even turn the whole solar system 180 degrees and see what the moon would look like to somebody in the southern hemisphere. So now the lit side, the crescent side, is lit from the left, if you're in the southern hemisphere, all on the same observational day. Okay, so now let's zoom out and leave our solar system. Oops, sorry. And let's see if we can find a familiar group of stars, like how about Orion? 
So this map here is in three dimensions with distances taken from the Hipparchos catalog, which um, maps stars, about 100,000 stars, mostly within about 1,000 light years. So with this 3D model of the stars, students can start to appreciate that there's depth to outer space and that stars within a constellation can actually have very different distances even though they appear in the sky as flat 2D shapes. You can even um, do kind of an exaggerated demo of the concept of parallax and how nearby stars like Sirius here can appear to change position relative to the more distant background stars when you look at it from different perspectives. So if you imagine you're observing it from one side of the sun and it lines up, say, closer to Orion's foot, and then you wait six months and observe it from the other side of the sun, then it now has moved significantly to the left. Now this is a, a very exaggerated um, view of what we're looking for when we're studying parallax, but that's essentially how um, Hipparchos measured all of these distances. You can even visit other stars by right-clicking and choosing Show Object, and this will recenter the camera around the star in Orion's belt. And you can see that some of these stars are closer by than others. And if we zoom out just a tad, okay, we can reconstruct what Orion looks like from an Earth-based perspective. So you can see the belt, you can see the four stars around here. But now you can pan around this whole group of stars and you can show your students what the grouping of stars that make up Orion to us would look like to somebody in a different part of our galaxy. Now if you keep zooming out, you can now see the best map that astronomers have made of our own Milky Way galaxy. So it's a flat disk, it's a spiral galaxy, and we're located at the middle of this yellow clump which shows the stars that have been mapped by the Hipparchos satellite. So we happen to have a lot more information here than we do in the rest of the galaxy, and that's why there's a more detailed map here. But there's otherwise nothing special about our location. And if we were looking at our actual galaxy, you wouldn't see a yellow blob like this at our location. This is just showing the area that's been mapped in detail. And we can see where the center of our galaxy is here, and the distance between us and the center of the galaxy is about 27,000 light years. If you keep zooming out, you'll eventually get to regions of the cosmos that have been mapped by the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. There are about a million galaxies mapped here, so each of these dots is an entire galaxy with hundreds of billions of their own stars. And these galaxies are mapped with their 3D positions all the way out to a distance here at the edge of about 1.3 billion light years. And you can really see the clumpy structure of the universe that was discovered by astronomers only about 25 years ago. The dark wedges here represent areas um, that astronomers have not mapped yet because dust and gas in our own galaxy make observations in these directions difficult. You can even visit other galaxies by choosing one and then doing a right click and and then go to Show Object, and it will take you to any of the galaxies that you choose. So you can see what life might be like in another part of our universe. So this only scratches the surface of what your students can explore and learn in Worldwide Telescope. If you'd like to learn more, please visit WorldWideTelescope.org or WWTAmbassadors.org. Thanks.